In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get a little bit more control over the response that we send back. If you see the responses that we've been sending back, we've been sending the actual content of the response, right? So when you want to send a message as a response, we just return the message instance and we depend on Jersey to do the conversion and change it to JSON. So what we're returning is just the response content. Now, what if you want control over what the status code is or what the header values are? Well, there's really no way to control that here if you're just returning the content as the response, as a return of your method. So I'm gonna show you how you can control that in this tutorial. So let me give you an example of a create message API, right? So right now I can do a post request to slash messages and it's gonna create a new message, right? So I just hit send. It created a new message with ID four, and uh, you notice the status is two hundred because uh, that's the default uh, status code that Jersey uses. And you notice the headers; there are some standard headers. But if you remember our design discussion for the Create Message API, we said a couple of things. We said that the response should ideally be two o one created. 200 is the success status code. And whenever something succeeds, well, you can return the 200 status code, but there is a separate status code for creation of a resource. So since we are creating a resource here, we should ideally use that status code. And that status code is 201 created. Now, how do we change this? The second thing we discussed was when a new resource is created, we want to send the resource URL back in the header, right? We wanted a created header, which had the resource URL for this new uh, resource that was created, which is of ID four. So we would have ideally liked to return the whole URL slash uh, messages slash four, right? So it'll be convenient to the user if that's in the header. We want to do those two. So let's see how that's done. So this is the method which creates a new message. And uh, right now I'm just returning the message and there's really nothing you can control as far as the header and uh, the status code is concerned. In order to control the entire response, what we can do is we can return from this method a separate instance of a separate class called response. So we don't actually return the message itself. What we return is a class called response, right? An instance of something that's called response. Now, how do you create this response? Now, this response is from the core package. Now, to create a response, you use what's called a response builder. And that's what lets you modify the status code and lets you modify the headers and all that stuff. So to use a response builder, what you do is you use response, the static call dot. And you see there are a bunch of uh, methods over here, but I'm going to use this status. See here, I can actually set the status to a particular status value. I can provide an integer or I can set a separate status. I'm going to choose this. So I do response.status and to set the status of 201, I use a status dot created. You see here, there is an, this is a status is an enumeration which has a created value. So this uses the 201 status code, right? So I do a response.status of status.created, and then I do a dot entity. So I'm returning the entity back, which is this message service.add message. Right, get a new message. I'm gonna use that and set the entity dot, and I do a build, okay? So now what's happening is, I'm creating a new instance of the response using the response builder. And the way the response builder works is it has all these methods like status, entity, which lets you add these extra data to the response. And then when I'm finally done, I call the build method to return an instance of the response. Now I can use this to return. So this creates a new instance of the response, right? Now I'm gonna save this and uh, let's see what happens when I create 
a new message now. I see I get 201 created because that's the status that I have set over here. So this is actually a, an easy way to return both the entity along with the status, right? I can choose the status that I want. I do a response.status, choose the status that I want, and I do a dot entity and choose the actual return content, and then I do a dot build, right? What I can also do is I can do a dot, you see here, there are like a bunch of stuff, right? I have a cookie, I can set the cookie, I can set the encoding, I can set the X bars. So there's a whole lot of stuff here. So the idea is to set all these different things and then call the dot build. As you can see, this is using the builder pattern if you're familiar with that. So you add all these different values to a builder and then you would do a dot build. So it's gonna build a response instance with all those values. And then in your resource method, you just return that response instance. And Jersey is gonna set all the right values in the actual response that gets sent back, okay? Okay, so now we have the status code. Let's look at the header value. You wanna create a location header which has the URI for the newly created message, right? Now let's say there is a message with ID four. You wanna set a header value called location and the value being the whole, you know, localhost 8080, messenger, messages, slash four. We want the URL for the newly created resource to be a part of the header. Now, one way we could do this, as you see here, there is a there is a header value, or the method over here, which which lets you set any arbitrary header key and value. So you could say the key is location and the value is the whole URI as a string, but uh, there's actually a better way. So if you look at uh, the methods that are available here, of course, you, we've picked response.status, status.created, but if you see, there are actually some shortcut methods for some of these standard uh, status codes. So you see there is a created method, right? So when you do response.created, it lets you send a location back, right? So if you send that location back, whatever that is, you're basically looking at a couple of things. So this line does a couple of things. One, since you're using created, it sets the 201 created status code and since you're sending the location, it adds that as the location header and sends it back, right? So this is a, a quick shortcut to setting both the status and the location, right? Since you would typically do this all the time, like I said, it's actually best practice to set both the status code to 201 and the location header of the new resource whenever you create any new resource. So this is a shortcut that's provided for us. Now we set created, now what's the location that we set, right? So created actually expects a URI. So I'm gonna create a new URI. And I need to send the URI back, okay? So to send the URI back, I would need to know what the ID is. So I'm gonna say slash messenger slash web API slash messages slash and then I add to it the new message dot get ID. Why am I doing messenger slash web API? Because the URI takes the the server context as the root, right? It's it starts with localhost colon eighty eighty. So I need to set anything onwards as a part of the URI. So I'm preparing a string and I'm passing it to the URI constructor so it creates a new URI and I set that to the created uh, method. And uh, this throws an exception, so I'm gonna add throws because I'm sure that this is gonna be a valid URI, at least I think it is. So I just throw the you know exception in the, in the method. Now I'm being lazy, but let's see how this works first. All right, now let's make this request again. Now if you examine the header, you see it's worked fine, right? So there's a location header with the entire location of this new instance. It's ID3, so it creates with ID3. I do this again, I get ID4, which is really cool. But look at this code for a minute. This is really, really bad, right? So I am actually hard coding the name of the application. I'm hard coding this, I'm hard coding messages, and I'm throwing an exception, this this is horrible, right? We don't want this, we wanna change this. Now what's a better way to get 
the URI information for this resource. Now, what I want to do is I want to be able to say whatever is the URI that the message resource is mapped to, just get that and add the ID to it, right? That's all you need. So you don't want to hard code this over here. You want the URI information for this resource. How would you get the URI information for this resource? Let me tell you, you already know this answer, at least if you've been watching the previous tutorials. Can you guess how to get the URI info? Well, it's actually very simple. It is at context URI info. If you remember in a previous tutorial, I had demonstrated how you can get the URI information as one of the injectable context information. Let me open up the inject demo. You see here, context URI info. I was able to get the URI absolute path. That's what we want. So that's perfect. So let me use this to get the URI info so that I don't do all this horrible mess, right? I'm going to remove this. I still use response.created. I need to send the URI information. How do I get that? Let me see URI info that Jersey is going to inject for us has a get absolute path. Okay. Now the get absolute path should, uh, let me actually do a System dot out dot print of the URI info dot get absolute path. Okay. Okay. Now if I access this, well, I get the actual URI for slash messages. Now I need to add the ID to it. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say string new ID equals string dot value of Okay, so I'm getting the value of this new ID. Okay. What I need to do now is get the URI info that get absolute path and add this new ID to it, right? So I this URI dot get absolute path is actually a URI, okay? So I need to do a two string and then I need to add the new ID to it and then I need to do the convert the whole thing back to a URI again. Well, this is actually beginning to look bad as well, right? So how do I add something to an existing URI? Well, thankfully, it's made very simple. So you see here, URI dot get absolute path. This class URI info not only has a get absolute path which returns a URI. It also has a get absolute path builder, which actually lets you build the URI with the base being the absolute path that we already seen. Okay, so I'm going to do a get URI info dot get absolute path builder, and then I'm going to do a dot path new ID. So basically, what this does is it gets this URI and then it adds this new ID to it, and then I do a dot build. Okay, so this is going to give me the URI that I want. I'm going to assign it to a new local variable called URI, and that is what I'm going to send over here. And that's it. This should work. Again, to clarify, what we're doing is we create the message, right? This is straightforward. Now we need to return response.created of the URI, which is the URI for the new message, and return it back. Now, how do I get hold of the URI? The first thing we did was use the add context to get the URI info instance. URI info is a handy JAXRS object, which lets you get URI information true to its name. Now the URI info class has a get absolute path method, which returns the URI of the absolute path. 
But what you need here to send to response.created is not the URI for the absolute path because that's just messages. What you need to return is messages slash and add to it the new ID of the new message that was created, right? So to add something to a URI, you would need to do a URI to string conversion, add this new ID to that string, and then convert the whole string back to URI, which is a pain. So instead, what you can do is, rather than using a URI.getAbsolutePath, you do a URI.getAbsolutePathBuilder, which is actually a URI builder. This again uses the builder pattern. And the way you add a path section to a URI is using the dot path, right? Dot path, I add in the new ID, so it does a slash and then the ID. So you can add chain bunch of stuff, right? You can do a dot path or something and then dot path or something, dot path or something, and then finally do a dot build. In this case, all I need is to add the ID. So I just do a dot path of the ID and then do a dot build. Now I get the URI that I need to send back. So I do a response dot created off that URI and it should return that response. Okay, so let's see if this has worked fine. I'm gonna send this request again, and this is still continuing to work. It still has the location header with the complete location and none of the hard coding over here right? It's at least a bit less messy than it was before with all the hard-coded values and all that stuff. And since we are not doing any conversion of URIs, we don't need this throws as well, right? I can actually remove that. So this is how you send the location value in the header as well as the status code, okay? So there are a bunch of other convenient methods for different kinds of status codes. So there is a response dot accepted for the accepted status. There is a not modified for not modified. You know, you have like a bunch of, uh, there's a response dot okay, which returns 200 status code. There's a bunch of other stuff, right? So this is what you would use for those standard, uh, you know, status codes, which you use a hundred times when you're building REST APIs. For those unique ones, you do a response dot status, and then you send the status, which is the unique status that you want, okay? So I hope this made sense. Um, check out the source code again. I'll upload it on GitHub and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.